Well, hey, everybody, welcome to Public News' podcast. I'm here with the Indignants. I got uh, Martin, Rick, Johnny, and Darren. How you guys doing, man? Really good. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah, Just got off yeah. stage, played a yeah. good show. It was super fun. Yeah, I heard you guys. You guys are killing it. Thank yep. you. That My was awesome. Is hot. Yeah, and then, you know, prior to this podcast right here, we're talking about uh, how, how you're going to take him out, how, how he's going to go out. Well, I was saying how... <laughs> Rick, our singer, Rick Bottrell, is he's a, he's a, he's a selfish guy because he doesn't want to die on stage. <laughs> and I thought it'd be cool if he did die on stage, like someone came with a, a like a rifle and shot him dead, like Dimebag. Like, and then all of a sudden we're on the Warp Tour, we're on Punk in the Park, we're on, you know, the Flogging Molly Cruise, we're on. Come like, on, Rick, get in. Like, come the on, new man. singer. Like, why can't you just? Does he, does Dude, don't quit your day job drumming, there. No, he no no he dies. I got I can't even just get shot in the leg. You got to piss off all kinds of people. Because that's not news. That wouldn't be news. That's like a half measure, yeah. yeah. Well, they, everybody's gonna see this because uh, your your set was just uh, live on Facebook, and uh, right. so they're gonna see this, and this will come out about you know, a week from now. And uh, so go in and introduce yourselves, man. Go to- I'm Martin Ruan. I'm Rick Petrell. Mr. Johnny Scott Gramercy. Darren Pfeiffer. So. Uh, how long you guys been together? How, how did this crew come together? What, what's your story, man? We were a bowling team. Hell yeah. In the beginning, there was four. It was two different ones. But it was Martin, myself, Mike Knox from Rigor Mortis, and Jesse Ramirez, who's now in Toledo Panic with Martin. Um, and then there was a lineup change. What happened was, what happened was, we were a bowling team, and we just got together to fuck around in Martin's living room. And just jam, just like the old days when we were 12, 13, 14, whatever. And we got together, and what we played, Blitzkrieg Bop, was our first song, and it felt really good. And then we just started messing around. And uh, the, we, we wrote a couple decent songs, and it just kept growing, and the commitment changed. And some of our members had other uh, responsibilities and couldn't put the time into it that we were starting to put into it. Yeah. And um, we ended up um, picking up Darren Pfeiffer, ex Goldfinger drummer. We got Johnny Scott Gramercy, DJ Johnny Scott Gramercy, um, and um, and we carried on. Uh, we've recorded a few demo songs, um, and we've written a bunch of new songs since we got this set up together. And we're gonna go back in the studio sometime this summer. We're looking to we're gonna put out a vinyl album, and uh, it's it's been a it's been a blast. It just grew organically. Just like when we, when people were kids, we had zero aspirations. Literally, our aspirations were to play a backyard barbecue, that, and that would be like, woo! Yeah. We we achieved all our goals, and they've just grown over time. Now we have a couple new goals, which is the album. I have a goal of uh, playing punk rock bowling at some point for a show. Not um, getting shot on stage. No. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's our new we'll goal as, yeah, of, that's as, our as of today. Goal. We're not. We're not. As of today, it's I right. don't really want to get. Yeah, I mean, we got a good drummer, we got a good bass player, yeah. great guitar player. Can I just say routinely, Darren, that like on stage a couple times I would get lost, and you're right fucking there. Like I'm, I'm so Aww. glad to be playing with you, man. Oh, nice. uh, you're just solid, man. Um, I'm thinking about baseball. <laughs> I, I take it back. <laughs> I'm like, Dodgers win today? Did yeah. they? <laughs> they? They were kicking they ass last seven time. to one. They won. Yeah, go Dodgers. <laughs> So, but yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, you guys Appreciate got music. You got, where can people find your music? Go we got a couple of songs out on Spotify and Pandora. Yeah. We're releasing them every All the major month platforms. or okay. whatever. When's our next song coming out? We got... It's coming out in three weeks. Truth Lies is coming out in three weeks. We're just doing individual songs right now, and they're all demos. Um, recorded at Greg Hudson's studio, Hudson Sound. Uh, and um, we're just releasing them every few weeks or... Every every couple of months and nobody has attention span anymore for a whole, yeah. you know, releasing them all at once. So that's kind of what we're doing. And I'm really excited to get back in the studio and, and record with the new setup and our new songs. We've scrapped a bunch of the early songs, you know, um, our songwriting has grown over time. Uh, uh, the way we write, what we write about the first few songs for me were about a breakup of a mutual with a mutual friend of ours. And uh, I want, you know, we were just kind of a little bitter like a 12-year-old wrote them. So we're scrapping those, and um, and they're getting better. And uh, the subject matter is changing, and it's very current. And we're just a bunch of old guys who like to rock out and Fuck yeah. punk rock. A yeah. similar, like, career trajectory as, like, Wilson Phillips. 
Like how their songwriting very grew. Simple. Yeah. Like we're going that same path. And the nepotism. I, I hear that comparison a lot, actually. Totally. Like I heard that twice today. You guys sound like Wilson Phillips. Who's that? The, the blonde, the blonde, the blonde chick, and pretty soon things will be the going red you know. Yeah. So, so to lead into that, I always ask the bands, man. Uh, you know, because people are gonna watch it, see you guys. So, to get a little bit personal, you know, what what influenced you to? You know, pick up the guitar, start playing the drums. You know, what was it? Your mom, dad, early age, was it? And someone, a rock star that you know, like you know, you know, it's funny because uh, uh, dude for the drones, uh, uh, he just said that it was uh, he was he was a nerdy kid, so he wanted to be in the punk scene because he felt accepted. You know, so you get a different answer from everybody. So, you know, go ahead, man. I'll start with you. Um, I think in high school, just um, you know, my friends had a band. They were like a couple years older than me, so all of a sudden we started going to parties, and this punk band was playing, and you know they were playing. So you know, it kind of got me interested in playing. And then with my friends, you know, we got instruments, and then just went in the garage and started banging away. Yeah. And ever yeah, ever since I was probably sixteen, I've been playing. Oh yeah. So uh, my family's really heavy into music, and uh, drums were actually my first instrument. That it was when I was a kid. My drums got repossessed, but that's another story. And Van Halen made me punk rock. So I loved rock and roll. I liked Black Sabbath, you know, Kiss. I was into all that when I was yeah. a kid. Led Zeppelin, whatnot. And then um, and I went, my mom owned a beauty shop. This is a true story. My mom owned a beauty shop. And one of the ladies that worked there had a couple older kids. They were like 16, and I was like 12 or something. And uh, they had an extra ticket to Van Halen at the Forum. So my mom paid like a lot of money at the time, like 40 bucks for this rad ticket yeah. to the Forum when I'm 12 or 13. So I go with these older kids to the Forum. I remember it was really cold. And they had black beauties. I didn't know what they were at the time. But, but we see the show and Van Halen rocked. And I'm this little kid. And I'm waiting at the car, freezing my ass off. And they come out and they go, we know where Van Halen's staying. Okay, Century Plaza Hotel. We go there. And I, and I try to blend in with everybody. This is like after midnight, right? We go in the elevator. We go up to the room. They rented the whole floor out. I, I go in the room and I sit down and I'm trying to like hide behind the lamp because I know I'm not supposed to be there, right? I was there about, what, 38 seconds? And the bouncer walks up. He goes, you out. So I'm down in the lobby. The guys with the black beauties are up there. The bribe security, they're up in the room. Long story short, I'm in. There is no short. Too late. There is no short. So I'm in, I'm in the lobby. I keep getting kicked out because I don't have a room. I'm too young to go in the bar. And it's freezing outside. I keep sneaking back in, hiding behind the, the marble columns and whatnot. David Lee Roth comes in with the bouncers, and I run up to him to tell him what a good show it was. And fucking bouncers push me into the column, right? I hit the column. Manager kicks me out. Skip ahead about two, three weeks. It's Thanksgiving, right? Or Christmas. It's Christmas. And my mom's so proud that she paid all this money and I went to Van Halen, but I hadn't told her the story yet. But my grandparents are over, right? So my grandparents are at the house. I know, I gotta cut it short. I love the drought. I know. I got, and so, it, you guys a good true parents. story. All right. so, so my mom's all proud and, and my grandma's tell, telling my mom about my mom's stepson started this band. He's got an album out, he's going on tour. So my mom goes, well, Rick just went to a show. So tell him how the show was, right? And so I tell that story, and my mom is just oh, flabbergasted, right? So my grandma goes, I'll get you on the guest list. Well, what? my uncle's Greg Hetzel from Circle Jerks. So I go to the Circle Jerks show on the guest list. It was Circle Jerks, Bad Religion, and Social Distortion opened up. I brought my friend, who later changed her name to Kenny Del Mar and was in the cramps, and Alan Losey, the skateboarder. And we go to one of our first punk shows, right? And we're backstage. I'm fingering some chick in the fucking roller skate storage room like I just had the fucking greatest time ever. Shake my head the next day I've been punk rock. That's Van Halen made me punk rock. I still like Van Halen. Oh yeah. I do too. That's sorry for the Great long story. story. That's okay. There's details I had to get to. I had forgotten the question. <laughs> what started during playing bass? What made you so cool? <laughs> um as far as music, I mean, I was very fortunate enough that my dad liked a lot of really good rock and roll. So, like, um, when I was nine, ten years old, we we had Clash records, Elvis Costello records. First time I heard the Clash, my dad played them for me. First time I heard the Pogues, Elvis Costello, Sinead O'Connor, a lot of good music. As far as on the more harder punk side of things, this is um, uh, there's maybe eleven, and maybe a little older. And there's a, a 
one of those uh, your kids might be next kind of news exposés about punk is yeah. you know taking over I remember and they that. showed a they showed a, a I think it was a Dead Kennedy show with the big circle pit and it was scary and intoxicating yeah. and uh, I don't know I just I've been sort of a, a hardcore punk kid since then right on right on I got into the drums be- early on because of big band like Gene Krupa Max Roach Buddy Rich my grandmother loved that stuff and my mom loved it too so she let me stay up and watch um, the Tonight Show whenever Buddy Rich was on and back in when I was growing up in the early 80s late 70s uh, Buddy Rich was on the Tonight Show literally like once every two weeks because Johnny Carson was such a drummer drummer he, he loved the drums so I would be up until like midnight 12.30 watching these, these like, uh, Ed Shaughnessy and like Buddy Rich just shred yeah. and I was like well I kind of want to do that I kinda, I wanna, look, that's fucking cool then I got into Van Halen Black Sabbath Led Zeppelin yeah. Deep Purple uh, my first punk experience was The Clash and The Ramones like that's what introduced me into, into punk rock yeah. but as far as drumming it was big band and then from big band into, into like Alex Van Halen's drum kit was like massive and had like six kick drums and 40 toms and 600 cymbals and but but Bonham was doing like the coolest drumming and then Stuart Copeland I, the police like so the rock rock got me into got me into like playing the drums how, I, about, how about Danny Carey oh from Tool he's legend Look, yeah he's, I just I've seen him like seven, I saw him a couple of, about a month ago and then I went to Oregon front row and he's right there dude I mean he I've seen Tool probably 70 times but I can't keep take my eyes off Danny Carey dude. it's the so dude, funny because because people talk about Los Angeles drummers and you know Taylor Hawkins gets thrown in that mix. Josh Freeze gets thrown in that mix. You hear names of different L.A. drummers, uh, but no one really mentions Danny Carey. They should because oh, he's, he's, fucking he's probably dude, one he, of the best. Oh, no, probably by, by far of the all best time. I've ever seen. Yeah, it's just like I love Josh Freeze to death, but Danny shreds him. Yeah, Danny, <laughs> he's, he's like six foot six. <laughs> Don Stoddard, the song's 15 minutes long, and the dude never fucking stops. He can you know? just do like choppy punk rock metal drumming, but he can do super duper finesse stuff. Like, yeah. Stuart Copeland or like like a big band drummer. Yeah. He's so good. So that, that that's what got me into. And then I li- like like listened to the Clash when I was in the Ramones and then Sex Pistols. Like those those are like the middle of the road like introduction to punk. And then yeah. as time went on, I got I, I grew up in Buffalo, so I got to go to New York City and see the New York City stuff that I really like. The Cro-Mags, Agnostic Front, Youth of Today. Yeah, Cro-Mags. The other the Cro-Mags, they were supposed to come here, and then they got big. Uh, Something happened in Maryland in one of their shows, but they're coming here in a couple months, I think. So, yeah, cool. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't have the luxury of growing up on the West Coast and seeing the dead Kennedys. And, yeah. You know. Yeah, so I grew up here, and then I got a football scholarship to Maryland, and I was playing football. I was back there for 30 years. I actually went to Buffalo and played against Buffalo University. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> the Bulls. It was 7 degrees. I was like, you part California of that mafia? fucking ball was frozen and shit. You part of that Bills Mafia? Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I, I was a troubled kid growing up, so my mom, when I, when I said I wanted to play drums, she wasn't super stoked, and neither was my family. But when the drums got into my room and I shut the room and I'd play, years later my mom told me, because uh, when I started playing, it was like I was playing for hours and hours and hours. She just could go about her business being a mom and doing dinner and laundry, and as long as she heard the drums, she knew I wasn't breaking into the neighbor's house or yeah. trying to steal a car or, you know. Smashing windows of cars, you know. I wasn't doing anything if I would get me arrested. Uh, so yeah. did you, did you, you, your band for uh, Gold, Goldfingers? Is yeah. That, what that here in your bed? Is that? That's the one. That's the, what, what year you were? That was 95. So, so yeah, so I saw you live at, the, at RFK. The HFS festival. Oh, HFS festival. Yeah. We went on after the Foo Fighters. Yeah, yeah, you guys are yeah, the last band to play. You, you know, uh, the funny thing about that show was they told us, they said, uh, last year the Ramones went on last, and uh, you're basically going to be the band that people leave the, the football stadium for. So don't be offended when people leave. And we're like, okay, and the Foo Fighters are going on, they're playing, yeah. you know, their first record, and, and we're like, oh my God, and Garbage was on the bill. Primus. Primus, yeah, yeah, it was an amazing show. Yeah, it was great. And we played, and no one left. No one left. Fuck that. No one left. No, it's we're like, it's oh. DC, do you know what It was leaving? probably 80,000 people. Oh, it was packed. Our, our, and we our were a band for packed. like a year, two year, a year and a half. Like, we're like, so like holy fucking shit. And this, it's probably, like a, yeah. a stage, too. Like, we're like meters apart from each other. Yeah, I, I remember being excited to see you guys. You know what I mean? So Foo Fighters were like, eh, okay, whatever. But I was like, you guys were just fresh out. And I was just like, fuck I yeah, thought the Foo Fighters rocked. I thought they were oh, awesome. Oh, they're, they're, they're great. But, you know, they're just kind of like, 
for me, it wasn't, you know, I was kind of more pissed that Nirvana was dead. They, you know what I mean? Then the Foo Fighters came along, you know what I mean? So it's like. And the show, this greatest show like, I ever played up until that point got ruined because I just got this brand new Pearl drum set two days before the show. It was green, it was spark, it was so nice. It was brand spanking new. And the show was so good, John Feldman, our singer, thought it would be punk rock to take the guitar and smash it over my kick drum. Oh. And, he, and he, he broke the he, he broke it right now. Oh. And I'm like hitting, big rock ending, big rock ending, and he smashes the, the kick drum. I'm like, mother f- <laughs> And afterwards, he's like, I'm so sorry, I'll get you a new kick drum. Oh, that's great. And he did, to his word, he got me a new kick drum. But, dude, you guys so, killed. You guys killed at that show. That was it was, it was fun. fun we, we walked off stage. We were floating on a cloud. And there was an after party in the dressing room, like all like Foo Fighters, Garbage, Primus. They were all they were all hanging out. We were just like, holy shit, this is real. This is like yeah, fuck yeah rock star shit. And, and then full circle, Garen's a drummer for punk rock karaoke with Greg Hetson. If we became friends, and I started singing some punk rock karaoke with yes, Pat, with Pat swinging Pat, it back was, around to the indignants, like. He recorded at Hudson Sound, Greg Hudson's studio, because mm-hmm. family, right? So uh, he's like, hey, Dan, you, you should check out the songs. I get a lot of people telling me to check out songs. I mean, I think we all do, but but I, I heard the songs and I played them and I was like, like, holy fuck, like, these are really good songs. Yeah. One after another, like, oh, that's a great song. And then another one, that's a great song. It's rare that you hear something and you like, like three or four or five songs in a row where you're like holy shit this is really 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 good yeah. and it turns out that my buddy was uh, uh, what's your name Rick was it was it was in the band recorded it at Greg Hetson's studio then he asked me to play drums and I was like well you're my buddy and I love you and the songs are killer and absolutely awesome. there we are and I just okay. love love these guys love this band a lot it's Fuck. A fun plus, band. Fun plus band we're friends be. you know yeah. like yeah, like friends. we can be at a show and just yeah together dude and sweet man. have have just random conversation about what was it stars stars shoes, or, 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 shoes, or yeah. like martin who left the room to masturbate uh, he, the other day at the rehearsal he pulled me aside and, and he and he and he started crying and he's hugging me i said what's wrong and he goes i had a pet um, cockroach and it died <laughs> and I was like, dude, I'm so sorry. And, and, and I, and I, and I, it, it, he cried a little bit and I patted him on the back. So you're right, Johnny. We're, we're friends. Like, we're there for each other. When your pet cockroach dies, you got to be there for your buddy. You know? <laughs> yeah, man. Fucking A, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit, hey. Um, You're probably wondering, is that a true story? No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> so, hey, the Indigenous Band, you guys got to check them out. Uh, any upcoming shows that you guys want to we talk have, about? We have quite a few, right? Yeah. Go for it. We got uh, the sixth. The si- April 6th at uh, Harley's Camarillo Bowl. We're bowling uh, the Easter tournament, which is yeah, we, next week. And then we're playing. Which is what May. Jesus would want, by the way. And we're playing. Uh, and we got May uh, 18th. May 18th at Transplants. In LA. In, no, May, no. 18th, May 18th Redwood. is at the Redwood, downtown LA. We're playing with the uh, Los Angeles uh, LA Slum Lords. Uh, and, I'd have to uh, check the calendar. Infamous yeah. Diffs. And couch surf. Is there, is there a place yeah. online where people could go and check it out? We have we have all the socials. We've got a check out on uh, our our um, in, the, the uh, Instagram, official. IG. We got Facebook. The Indignance we have a website. Official. Oh, yeah, so Indignance. check these guys like out, us. man. They fucking rock the socials. Like, hey, man, we'd love to have you guys come back. Yeah. Anytime, Thanks, let, let us know. Out, Thank you so much. Thank you all, so much. All about we all work for a living. This is a school night, so. I, we're really glad to play Mrs. Olsen. We've been wanting to play here. So check we out the drowns. We'll come back. We're going to go check out the drowns, our buddies. We really appreciate you guys. Yep. Hey, you everybody, much. have a good night. Thanks, Thanks out. Thank you, guys.